in government and organizations for social good. As you all know, some of you that have been following us, last week we had guests, Chief John Niamodo, we had Pa Ayo Adebanjo, an elder statesman and the funny for a leader. Also had um, uh, Beatrice Pogo, who incidentally couldn't join, Yinka Odumakin, Ankyo Briggs, and Governor Olusegu Mimiko. The previous week, we rubbed mine with Alaji Tanko Yakasai and Adamugaba. And also, in the previous week, we had Professor Sukuma, uh, Sukuma Soludo when we discussed COVID-19, oil price crash, and its likely implication for Nigeria. Today, we have in our midst Professor Awal Yadudu, a professor of law and the current vice chancellor of the Federal University Benin Kebi, Kebi State. Dr. Sam Amadi, the former chairman of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, and he is currently a senior lecturer and head of department at the Bayes University. The third guest today is Professor Chidi Odinkanu, Senior Team Manager for the African Program and Open Society Justice Initiative. He is also a Nigerian human rights activist. He is a lawyer, a professor, and a writer. For the conversation this evening, I'm going to be your host, Mazi Tochuku Ezoke, and the moderator remains Dan, Daniel Elumba. Now, this evening, people, there is going to be a house rule. Everyone will be placed on mute. Please, we beg you, do not unmute yourself. Please dress appropriately. If you must turn on your camera, make sure you are properly dressed. And also be mindful of your background. Questions will be taken from those who have their cameras on. That means if you don't have your camera on, and if you raise your hands, which we do virtually, we will lower your hands if your hands are raised and you do not have your camera on. That is the house rule this evening. I would want to confirm once more that we have um, Dr. Sam Amadi here. If we have him, have you, uh, Dan, are you able to confirm that Sam Amadi is right now with us? And do we have, I have here Chid or Numa, and uh, can we confirm that we have um, uh, Professor Chid Odinkalo as well? Uh, Chid Odinkalo said he will be joining, he had a meeting over running 7 p.m., but he will join on soon. But I, I'm, I think we have Barista Mahmoud Abdul with us now. Okay, so in that, in that case, once more, we will be kicking off with Barista Mahmoud Abdul. Now, Barista Mahmoud Abdul, as some of you must, you know, might know, uh, on Twitter, we profoundly, and we call him the Oracle. The Oracle, as I found call you on Twitter, can you please make your presentation this evening? Uh, you thank you, Mazi. Uh, thank you, Mazi Zoke and uh, thank you. Daniel Lomba for inviting me to your August virtual uh, virtual conversation. We, I'm pleased. I'm pleased to be here. Uh, the issues that you have outlined for conversation this evening are topical. They go to the root of our collective existence as a people and also as as a nation. Uh, for Nigerians out there who are gradually easing out of the lockdown that we've been in since mid 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 March, it's been a traumatic time time for them, six, seven weeks, even more than that for most. And a lot of things have happened in the past eight weeks that we have had this this, this lockdown and partial lockdown. Uh, the 
the deep the poverty that confronts our people has become more deep and they become stuck and stuck uh during, during the course of the lockdown uh we have experienced conflicts between the center and the peripheral states i if you remember there was a running battle on the pages of our papers and on social media uh, a battle between the governor of river state and uh, the and the minister of aviation uh, at one level uh, the conflict highlighted uh, some of the issues that we do raise that go at the heart of restructuring of our country and these eight weeks or so have also shown the uh, on preparedness or if a last state some of us people our quarters of governance kept shouting that we are ready and we've seen how ready that they are just last week pictures surfaced on social media of the isolation center uh in you know in Kano state 600 bed uh, center which turned out to be an empty spot hall uh, these things highlight some of the problems we are having and it also raises the fundamental question though it recognizes the fact though we recognize the fact that Health is an item under the concurrent list, but it also highlights some of the conflict that we have experienced between the states, you know, and the center. Uh, I, I would ask: We are dealing with uh, a public health issue. Uh, should we have an NCDC that is a national institution run the show without the states having input, you know, into the whole? question of public health crisis that we're having, is it, is it possible that for once we can restructure our country, let state deal with issues as they affect them without the overbearing and over aching influence you know, of, of the center? We have seen these conflicts play out again and again. But COVID-19 has really exposed the underbelly of the Nigerian state that over 90 million Nigerians live in poverty, that our state is poor, is incapable of taking care of its citizens. And we see countries of the world, you know, doing all sorts of, you know, social programs uh, to uplift their citizens during dependency of the law. But in Nigeria, with Minister Affairs, Keep telling Nigerians they are spent billions, millions of naira in taking care of children that are out of school. COVID-19 also exposes corruption of the nation state. And these are fundamental questions. I we want to um, make sure that we have the next speaker. It, uh, Dan, do we, are we confirming? Yes, I think I, 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 I have. The idea. Yes, I am. I think at some point your connection was a little bit frozen, but that's fine. I think you're back on. So, um, uh, Dan, are you uh, confirming the next speaker, please? Uh, yes, uh, we have. I think we have Dr. Samar Madi here. But before we go on to Dr. Samar Madi, um, uh, Barrister Mahmoud has given a very succinct uh, perspective. When we invite speakers, we are inviting them for a purpose. We don't just go out to get people to come in and speak to us. And when we invited you, we um, there is we, there are questions we need to, uh, you to highlight. For us, please. Uh, in our previous uh, conversation, some of the speakers highlighted the problem of the 2014 constitutional conference that was organized by President Guru Janata. And I understand you, you attended that 2014 constitutional conference. Am I correct, sir? Absolutely. Very good. Now, the question is if Guru Jonathan was sincere in organizing that conference, why didn't he implement it before he leaves? Why leave it for, why didn't Good Lord Jonathan um, implement the conference before he left off it? That's the, basically my first question to you, please. Right. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, Dr. Dr. Jonathan Goodluck. I only participated as a, one of the 19 delegates that represented the Nigerian uh, civil society uh, from Edo State and the south side of Nigeria. Uh, I think the political calendar was not in favor of Jonathan Goodluck. Don't forget that he was a late convert 
produce her argument of convocation of sovereign national conference that would tail into a national conference. And when he, 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 he inaugurated the conference in February 2014, uh, it was supposed to be a three month conference. Don't forget that we ran into all sorts of problems. And I think the conference was extended by one month. And uh, the final report of the conference was not presented till August 2014. And in September, to be fair to President Jonathan, he inaugurated the Aduki Mohammed Committee to look at uh, the uh, propositions, resolutions, and re recommendations of the national conference. Don't forget that the resolutions were divided into three. You had the resolutions that dealt with the constitutional matters. We also had resolutions that dealt with you know, judicial matters. And we also had resolutions that dealt with, you know, that dealt with policy matters. And it was the responsibility of the Aduki Committee to see through, through the resolution of the national conference. And the Aduki Committee didn't submit the report till late October uh 20, 2014 by october 2014 INEC had signaled uh, uh what i described as the open system for for electoral campaigns that year so the the electoral and political calendar got president jonathan uh, caught up he could not implement it but it's not a defense for jonathan there were also uh, resolutions, the resolutions of the national conference, they were basically policy resolutions that I thought he ought to have implemented before, before he left office. He did it. But if government is a continuum, and I, I emphasize this point, uh, there, there would have been no need for this government to have jettisoned the whole, the whole 950 page report of, of the national conference. Perhaps, at least to give to the government, uh, they, 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 they have done things very clever. The National Waterways Bill that was passed by the 8th National Assembly in 2016-2017 was uh, a copy and paste resolution of the National Conference. In the past three years, we have seen policy positions for this government, I can't remember, I remember quite a lot now, that this government has, has executed that are directly policy resolutions, constitutional resolutions of, of, you know, of the National Conference. The government said it was going to uh, run its own program along the line of resolutions of the National Conference. The Kenny Namani Committee, committee headed, headed by, as I speak to you, reports of both committees. You know, I've not seen I've not seen the light of the day. But let me correct myself here. The Indamani Committee was not uh, uh, strict to censor uh, in respect of reviewing the resolutions of the National Conference. It was in respect of looking at ways that we can reform you know, the present electoral system. You know, so if we add the electoral system, the resolution on the electoral system as part of the agitation for the structure of, nation, of the national conference, my argument would be that the, the government has fared very poorly. And thankfully, today is tonight. We are commemorating five years anniversary of this of this program. Okay, uh, we thank you very much for this exposition. Uh, I'm sure other people will also have to have questions to ask you as time goes on. But uh, let's move ahead and let's invite our next speaker and then when more questions come in, I'm sure we'll have more questions.